almost 31 years ago, I went to my first Adoption Network Cleveland meeting at the Cleveland Heights Library. I've been referred by my therapist, Vicki Koss, an adoptive mom and the spouse of a birth father. Vicki showed me the door to what eventually became a transformed life. My memories of the early meetings I attended have merged into kind of a collage of images and feelings, and they can really be summed up in one word, belonging. In 1991, I was desperately searching for a way to understand some frightening feelings and emotions I was having that seemed to just come out of nowhere. Before finding Vicki, I had uh, tried going to some ACA groups. If you don't know, that's adult children of alcoholics. And there were some things that resonated for me, although I never saw an adult beverage touch, go past the lips of my parents. Um, I stopped going after a couple of meetings. I also was looking for some meetings of Codependency Anonymous. And interestingly, several years later, Dottie and I shared a space at Fairmount Presbyterian with a CODA group. Um, so at that very first meeting, thankfully, I knew that I had found what I was looking for. In its 35 years, Adoption Network Cleveland has provided a remarkable number of services and advocacy on behalf of the adoption constellation. My understanding is that it all began with these general meetings and that were open to everyone impacted by adoption. I still believe that these meetings are the beating heart of this organization. I personally facilitated or participated in over 400 meetings. I'm not alone. There are other facilitators, several still involved, most notably my co-facilitator, Dottie Clem, who's been involved from the beginning and who still shows up with me every month. No doubt we're still getting some value by showing up. At the same time, we welcome people regularly who are attending for their very first meeting. And for those attending for their first time, we hear them mirror remarks that are much the same as my own were in 1992. Words like, when I come here, I feel like I don't have to explain myself. Or this is the only place in my life where I feel like people get me. Or I get so much validation from, from when I attend. And I always thought I was the only one who felt the way I do. Before the pandemic, we met in person, obviously, but with the availability of Google Meets and Zoom, we were quickly able to transition to virtual meetings. It was not easy. Nevertheless, we were able to continue to offer the connections and the support that we had come to depend on. In contrast to the in-person meetings that served just a local population with sometimes visitors dropping in from Columbus or Cincinnati, Toledo or Dayton, we've had people from Canada, Mexico and many of the other 49 states all in one meeting. While I think there is value in giving and receiving support from a homogeneous group like adoptees only or birth mothers only, foster parents and so on, the brilliance of Betsy's vision was the heterogeneous group that became known as, started out as the adoption triad and then became known as the adoption constellation. The feeling of belonging is profound for adoptees who've spent a lifetime trying to fit in. And it's not unusual for us to hear from other perspectives, adoptive parents, birth parents, siblings, extended family, and so on. The feeling that, as we say in our opening remarks, you are with people who understand. In 2013 in Cleveland, Adoption Network Cleveland hosted the annual convention of the Adoption American Adoption Congress at the Hilton Garden Inn at East 9th and Carnegie. During that event, the Ohio House of Representatives voted approximately 96 to 1, if I remember, to grant adoptees access to their original birth certificates something Betsy and Adoption Network had been working on for 20 plus years. We celebrated, as it turns out, prematurely as the Ohio Senate rejected, rejected that House bill. While this is so strongly in my memory, it was one of the ANC board member, AAC board members 
that had some statistics I didn't know and was startled to learn. The number of birth records that were sealed between 1964 and 1996 that were opened, that's a period of 32 years, affected about 400,000 people. Two years later, we finally got over the finish line and original birth certificates were open to adoptees. That startling statistic made me realize that the work of Adoption Network Cleveland may never be over. Many of those 400,000 people have found us and many more eventually will. It's my belief that our general meetings are where the rubber meets the road, where people impacted by adoption, maybe for the first time in their lives, find it possible to feel like they belong. I'm gonna end with a story that I think illustrates the power of our general meetings. In the early 2000s, there was a 40 something year old birth father that regularly attended what was known as the Heights meeting. He often spoke about his longing to know his daughter that he had relinquished. And he found and secretly followed her on social media. Back in the day, we, before social media, we sometimes at our meetings talked about psycho drive-bys where those of us who had found family would literally drive by the house fantasizing about what it might be like. And we even had one guy at a meeting one time who said he participated in a psycho flyby because he was a pilot. Um, this birth father shared about the fear that if he searched for and found his daughter, he might very well upset his upset her life. Her life. He became resigned that she would have to be the one that searched. By 2006, he stopped attending, and I often thought about him. He was one of those rare and remarkable men who could be open and vulnerable and talk freely about his experience. I thought even I thought of him again just last month in January when we had a topic meeting titled Male Perspectives on Adoption. Though he didn't attend in January, Dottie and I were surprised and excited to see that he had registered for our February meeting. So after the introductions, he took the lead and recounted his earlier participation and then to our surprise, revealed the presence of his daughter who had been off camera and asked her to tell their story. It was a moving, touching, and inspiring tale of reunion and belonging. During our closing remarks, I asked them to reflect on how their reunion had changed them. She began to cry and struggled to describe the profound difference that it's made for her. I knew then that just like me and so many others, she was living a transformed life. In part, it is stories like this that have kept me coming back for 31 years. I wanna end by acknowledging each one of you for your service. Being on a board can be a thankless job, but because of your commitment and dedication, people like me have found a place where we belong. It is in no way an exaggeration to say that through you and me and all the volunteers over 35 years, Betsy Norris and Adoption Network Cleveland continue to literally change the world. So thank you for accepting the challenge and for listening.